Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. And we continue to follow breaking news that happened overnight. If you're not near your screen, we do want to invite you to take a look at this as this is video of Iran firing air defenses at drones suspected to be from Israel. And again, this is a nighttime shot, but you can see some of those bright flashes right there in the distance. Now, Tehran has downplayed this incident, indicating that it has no further plans for retaliation a response that appears aimed at averting a region-wide war. Israel also carrying out a missile strike targeting an air defense unit in southern Syria, causing material damage. Uh, that's according to state-run Santa News Agency, which quoted a military statement earlier today. Now, you may remember that Israel has vowed to respond to Iran's unprecedented weekend attack, leaving the region bracing for further escalation after months of fighting in Gaza. Allies, though, have urged Israel to hold back on any responses to the attack that could spiral. A senior Iranian official telling Reuters there were no plans to respond against Israel for this incident. But again, this is an ongoing situation as the conflict continues in the Middle East. Uh, we do want to bring in Dr. Howard Stouffer with the International Affairs and National Security Department with the University of New Haven. He's also a former member of the Senior Foreign Service of the Department of State and also served as the Deputy Executive Director of the Counterterrorism Committee Executive uh, Directorate of the United Nations Security Council. Dr. Stouffer, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me. So I do want to first start out with the breaking news of the reported uh, Israel strike against Iran. Of course, Israel has said uh, since last Saturday's attack by Iran that it would respond, but not giving a timeline. What can you tell us about the news that broke overnight? Well, I'm not surprised at all that the Israelis responded. Um, you know, their initial reaction after the missile strike by Iran was to have a massive attack against Iran, uh, but they were talked down by President Biden and many other leaders uh, to not um, in initiate an attack on that scale, and particularly since it was a win. I mean, 99% uh, of all of the drones and ballistic missiles and cruise missiles fired at Israel um, failed to, um, to cause any damage, so that was a huge win for them. Of course, um, we have to bear in mind that this was the largest drone strike in military history. So there was no way that uh, Israel could just sit back and in that neighborhood say, we're just going to ignore it. And so the decision was to take some kind of an action. And I believe what's happening now, um, and it's been going on for some time, but now directly, is this, this is the way Israel and Iran communicate. So the Israelis took out uh, one senior general and other military leaders um, in an annex to, their consul to the consulate in Syria where the Iranians were located. But they're located there in order to be able to continue attacks on Israel from bases in Syria, from bases in Iran, Iraq, and from bases in Yemen with the Houthi. So it's not exactly like they had their hands clean. The Israelis admit that it was probably a, a miscalculation to take them out in the embassy complex or the consulate complex. Iran reacted and sent um, all these missiles over to Israel, which were designed to cause you know massive casualties. Had they not been struck down, there would have been hundreds and hundreds of people injured or killed. Uh, luckily, all of them were knocked out of the air. So what Israel decided to do <clears throat> was to send back a message saying, we must strike back at you. You have to know that if you attack us directly, we will be capable of attacking you. And what they did is they attacked uh, Isfahan, which is um, a very interesting city. It's a beautiful ancient city. And um, it has, um, it's located, it, what's located there is where all of the Ukrainian enrichment facilities uh, for Iran, Iraq, Iran is, are located. They didn't touch those. There is a military base that's there. There's an ammunition facility. Um, there are a number of other military activities in the area. They chose to strike very lightly, relatively lightly, at the single base, uh, which is a well-protected area by uh, air defenses. And basically, the message back to the Iranians was, we have to strike back. This is what we're capable of doing. If you keep this going, we will be able to cause much more painful, much more significant damage to you. Um, and if we go in an all-out war, you will basically lose. So um, that was the message back. The message from the Iranians clearly was, 
you know, you, you attacked our generals and killed them. We're striking back at you directly. The Israeli struck back. So this is the messaging that's going on. This is a new way of communication between enemies. And um, I think in the future, uh, the Israelis will continue to attack bases in, in Syria and Iraq that are set up by the Iranians. Uh, there's no way that they're not going to do that. They do that when they feel there are components coming in that would give Hezbollah or other groups uh, the ability to strike much more precisely against Israeli targets from much closer from Iraq and from Syria. Uh, so I, I think we're, this is not the end of it, but I think the Iranians are being very smart about basically saying, OK, this is the end now. You may recall that in 2020, when the United States under President Trump uh, took out uh, General Soleimani, who was the head of the, uh, the Revolutionary Guards, and the Iranians swore that they were going to take, uh, you know, a response against the United States. They chose to attack a military base in, in Iraq. Yes, there were casualties on the American side, but no one was killed, and there were no significant damage to the American base. So that was also a, a message saying, okay, we've concluded our need to respond against each other. You know, in that part of the world, saving face is a very important part um, of how do you live in that neighborhood. And, of course, um, there's still continuing fighting going on. There's continuing exchanges going on in northern Israel between Israel and Hezbollah. And, of course, now I might add that the Israelis have about 10,000 forces left in Gaza, in southern Gaza. They've moved their forces up north in the expectation that at some point in time uh, the Hezbollah might try to increase the scale of their attacks and then uh, put Israel at, at greater risk. So they want be prepared in case there is an incursion by Hezbollah into Israel, or conversely, Israel needs to conduct an incursion into southern Lebanon and, and cause damage or significant harm to Hezbollah. And Dr. Stouffer, you pointed out several different aspects happening right now in real time. Of course, uh, Israel has continued to, to express that it is committed to expanding into Rafa. But now we have these new conflicts that are emerging most recently, of course, with Iran. But as you mentioned, also, there's concern with Lebanon and also Syria. You mentioned that Israel will likely continue those attacks in Syria and Iraq. What are the, the discussions, the conversations happening right now? now because this isn't just about the present this is about thinking long term which no doubt uh, israel is currently doing what might those conversations those discussions entail well i think it's uh, clear that the israeli military command the uh, the idf forces know have tremendous uh, and accurate intelligence they know when things are being sent in from iran into syria and iraq that could pose a significant threat to israel and I believe that they will continue to strike against those shipments and against those bases as needed. They will not be intimidated by the Iranians whatsoever. And it's kind of interesting. Iran is this gigantic country when you look at a map and it's huge and you look at the tiny size of Israel. But in terms of military capability, it's just the opposite. The Israelis have F-35s. They have the most advanced uh, air defense penetrating equipment in the world. They have avionics that are the most advanced in the world. They have the most advanced air defense system in the world, as we saw uh, back on Sunday. So for the Iranians to be threatening the Israelis, if they're going to take out military equipment that is going into countries that are bordering on Israel, bordering on Syria, Syria, Syria borders on Israel, Iraq borders on Israel, and uh, or near Israel, and um, they're not going to stand for, you know, that buildup of military capability, which could be used against them in the future. It would be as if, you know, both Mexico and Canada started building bases against the United States and we were going to do nothing about it. The Israelis will continue to do that. And each time that there is a strike, the, we'll have to see what the Iranians do. If they start striking Israel directly, then I think we're going to see a, a, big, a much a greater increase in the scale of fighting that is possible that could take place. I think the Iranians are sober about what their capabilities are. They're very vulnerable. I mean, they have all these gigantic oil facilities, which Israel will not strike because that will certainly hurt the West in terms of the amount of oil that's on the world market. So that would drive up the price of oil. But that's a vulnerability. All of their bases are strung out along the Straits of Hormuz. Uh, even though they have air defenses, the Israelis can penetrate them. Uh, you know, the, and even their nuclear facilities, they picked that city Isfahan because that's where their enrichment facilities are and some of the nuclear programs are. And they are basically saying, you know, if you 
if you really intimidate us, if you really hurt us in some way, we can take out your nuclear capability. We can do that, even though, um, and I've heard this, even though many of their actual uh, bomb systems that they're putting together are located inside mountains, everybody working in a mountain will need, uh, you know, an air supply, a food supply, a water supply. And if they were to knock out those, those supplies going into the mountains, those people would be sealed in. And it would be, uh, you know, their way of striking against those nuclear capabilities of Iran. Dr. Sofer, do you think this is it for now from Iran, or do you think Iran is looking to uh, carry out further attacks? Because, again, as you mentioned, even though the size of the country of Iran is much larger than that of Israel, Israel has a much more robust uh, armory and, and reserve. But I also want to ask you this, because we have seen Russia, China having those relationships with Iran. And I want to ask you about that, because it seems as they are strengthening their relationships. What could that mean down the road? Well, I think it's important to bear in mind that uh, the United States at some point must have been in touch with China to urge the Iranians to show restraint because, you know, the Chinese depend on Iranian oil. And if the Iranian oil facilities were destroyed, or seriously impaired, uh, China would be having a difficult time finding a way to replace that oil in the short term or even the medium term. So I think China has been urging restraint quietly, you know, for their own purposes, not to help out the United States or Israel whatsoever, but to, for their own purposes. And um, I think there are other countries around the world. The G7 foreign ministers are meeting in Italy, and they, of course, have issued statements calling on Iran to uh, basically, you know, end this 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 exchange right now and uh, de-escalate. But that doesn't mean there won't be other events in the future. Um, Iran continues to give, you know, a green light to the Houthis to fire missiles into Israeli ships in the Red Sea and Western ships, give a green light to Hezbollah to continue to lob drones and uh, ballistic missiles into northern Israel. Remember, there are 65,000 people not living in northern Israel because of that. And, of course, they give the green light to the bases in Iraq and uh, Syria to continue to harass the Israelis. So, you know, it's not over by far, but I think the, the messaging to each side has been very clear. And I would be very surprised um, if the Iranians were to, uh, you know, to retaliate for what was basically um, a messaging strike, basically saying, see, we can reach this place that's very, very vulnerable, very important to you. And we did very little damage because we want to just let you know we can we can get there. So back off. And it, and it gave the Israelis a chance to make that message. And Dr. Sofer, you made a you made a very important point in that Iran previously had been using proxies in order to send messages last Saturday. That really was the very first time where they stepped up themselves to send that message directly. How significant uh, is Saturday's event? And then, of course, Israel's response uh, reportedly to what Iran did, that attack. How significant is it that they are now communicating directly in this manner? Well, I, I think it's, um, it, it makes the region more dangerous. Um, it makes it more likely that, you know, there'll be further incidents between Israel and the Iranians. Um, and there will have to be ways that there have to be channels where the United States and China and other countries that uh, have relations with both sides, or not both sides, the U.S. doesn't. We use the Swiss to talk to the Iranians. But there are many countries that do. And I think that will just make it more likely that the Iranians in the future will attack Israel directly. And in turn, Israel will directly attack Iran. And we'll be back in the same place again, you know, weeks from now, months from now. Um, it, it certainly doesn't de-escalate completely. It, we've crossed the red line, and that red line will probably happen again at some point. And of course, a lot depends on what happens in Gaza. A lot depends on how the Hezbollah pull back from uh, attacking northern Israel. And at some point, the Houthi will have to stop uh, firing their missiles into um, the Red Sea and against the low southern, southern part of Israel. So all of these factors suggest that the region is, is, is tenser than it was before. But at least for now, uh, we're not going to see any further, I, I believe, that we won't see any further escalation, particularly bearing in mind that Monday night begins a major holiday for the Israelis, the holiday of Passover. They're, you know, leaving of Egypt, um, you know, 3,500 years ago. And that's a major holiday on the calendar for the Israelis. And I think attacking Israel during that time would be even more and would stir a more intense response from the Israelis and the Iranians know it. So 
I think we're in for a, a short period of quiet, maybe hopefully longer period. As of yet, we haven't yet heard from IDF or the Israeli government regarding this breaking news. When, we, when might we expect to hear from them and what might we expect to hear? Well, my guess is that at some point the White House will issue a statement either directly by President Biden or by Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, um, or, or a spokesman just saying, uh, you know, we're glad that the situation now is de-escalated and it's quiet. It may be premature to issue such a statement today on Friday. Um, I don't think the Israelis will admit to anything like that. They will not. They will not say a word. They've they've done actions like that in the past where they never say it was them that did it. But you know, all the parties that need to know know who was striking them, and conversely, the Israelis know who was striking back at them. So, uh, like I say, this is a new form of 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 language. It's a new form of messaging. It's a very dangerous form of messaging, but you know, uh, that's the situation we're in right now. And I, I don't, th I would be very surprised if the Israelis said anything. All right. Before we let you go, Dr. Stofer, is there anything else that you would like to add or share with our live now for Fox viewers as we continue to follow this breaking news? And also, as you mentioned, uh, the beginning of Passover, a very, uh, very important holiday uh, in Israel. Anything else that you would want to let us know? I would just like to say that um, Bill Burns, the director of CIA, issued a statement because he was uh, working with Qatar in Egypt to try to come up with a very robust proposal for um, having a ceasefire in, in Gaza. And that proposal was put forward to the, uh, to the Hamas leadership and they turned it down. So, uh, you know, uh, he said that uh, this is extremely disappointing that all the parties that are trying to reach a ceasefire basically were on board with a proposal that could have, you know, stopped the fighting and brought the hostages out, however many are left alive. And uh, I think his statement stands for what it, what it is. It's, everyone's trying to make an effort here, and uh, the Hamas leadership feel trapped, and they feel uh, they don't need to make any more concessions for the time being. And again, we have not yet heard a timeline into the expansion into Rafa. What might that timeline look like, or is it really a wait-and-see situation at this point in time? Well, um, you know, given that the holiday is going to begin soon and, you know, you have ten, much fewer soldiers. I mean, I, it, it, the number of soldiers that left uh, Gaza was quietly withdrawn and those soldiers were brought north. Either they were conscripts that were sent home to continue the economy of Israel. You know, a good percentage of the economy are people who are ordinary people who walk in the walks of life have jobs and businesses, but they sent up their troops up to the north. And so there's 10,000 troops left maybe even uh, more or less uh, that number. And I don't think they're going to go into uh, Rafa right away. I think we're going to wait and see until towards the end of the month when this holiday of Passover is over. And we'll see if uh, the Israelis can work out some kind of deal with Hamas through the United States, Egypt, and Qatar, or, uh, or not. And then, you know, they might, I don't know what kind of operation they have in mind, but there'll be something going on. They just can't let things remain uh, status quo. Obviously, status quo is not acceptable. All right, Dr. Howard Stouffer with the University of New Haven, thank you for taking the time to speak with us about this breaking news. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.